In the past year, nearly half of venture funding is going to AI-related startups. Probably uh, not that surprising. That's according to Crunchbase analysis. Joining us now is one investor who's bet on uh, companies both outside and inside the AI ecosystem. Ben Narison uh, is here, founder of Tenacity Venture Capital, which invests uh, in seed stage uh, companies. You're too old to understand all this stuff, aren't you? I mean, do you have a bunch of 20-year-olds be beating the bushes? Uh, to have, and and you're, you're younger than I am. That was not a, uh, that was oh, not a wrap. But, but isn't it hard for you? With age comes wisdom. Do you have a bunch of people working, from you that, working for you that, that uh, are scouring the, the, the ranks of these companies out in Silicon, Silicon Valley? Or? So I've been doing seed investing for about 18 years. I've funded about 180 companies, and those founders are my eyes and ears, and they're also my diligence. Like, I funded a company recently called Hippocratic, which is an AI business that um, augments nurses to make calls to you when you go home from a hospital or doctor's visit. And Moonjal Shah, who runs that company I've known for 20 years, he is probably the, one of the most knowledgeable people I know around AI. So we would literally get together for breakfast every week and talk about sort of how this was evolving over the last 18 months. It took me... 18 months before I made my first AI investment because I did need to have a point of view. You can't just blindly say, That's oh, I meant. Yeah, I, this I, is good. I mean, I can't imagine that. I, I guess I was speaking for myself. I can't imagine trying to navigate through. And there, there, there are a lot of startups with kids that are like 25 years oh, old. Oh, yeah. I mean, that might be too old at this point. You know, look, the way I thought about this is when you go back to the beginning of the internal combustion engine, when the car was invented, there were yeah. 2,000 car companies in the United States. There were 2,000 car companies in Germany. And so for a long time, I was like, well, how am I so smart? I'm going to figure out who Ford would be. But then I thought about it, and I said, well, you know, Ford had a very specific point of view. They had something novel in that the production facilities were set up in a totally different way. And so I do and think... And they were can... marketing to the masses. Yes. And you've, just got, you've got to find a reason why you can believe... Look, some of these AI companies are going to be the biggest of the big, you know, multi-trillion dollar companies, but there's going to be a lot of blood. So what's the equivalent of the production line or some of a other novel uh, device, especially when people talk about the commoditization yeah. of all of these tools? So the come. problem I still suffer with is that that engine is not novel. So what makes you distinct? And I've come to believe that data is only a temporary mode. A lot of people talk about the value of their data, their proprietary yeah. data. That's temporary. That data is going to get sold over time. Because if you can make an extra $10 million a year by hoarding your data for yourself, but you can make $100 million a year by selling it to other people, right. you're going to sell it. Right. So I think first to brand is very important. I think there are markets like the ones where you can't afford to be wrong, medical, legal, things like that. You can't go in front of a judge with some hallucination right. and say, but, you know, ChatGPT told me this. So who's doing, who's doing the best when it comes to, let's say, medical? Because I think that's pretty... Well, I do love Hippocratic. I am an investor, personally. Yeah. But, you know, what they're doing is they're literally having the LLMs call. Imagine this. So today, I don't know, a thousand people go into a hospital a day in some city. They go home. Some of them get calls for follow-up. Now, all of them will get calls. And the LLMs can navigate and figure out whether you're doing what you need to do and be helpful to you. And, and they also... Here's one of the things that's fascinating about AI that people don't think about. It fundamentally changes the value proposition of time. You call in for help somewhere. The person on the other end of the phone is getting paid by the hour. They want to get off that phone. You talk to an LLM, it will talk to you for 12 hours. Yeah, will... but will it give me the right answer? There's nothing worse than calling in and getting a machine and just say, customer representative, yeah, customer representative, get me out of this hell. I am that. I am like representative, representative, representative. I, I, I won't talk to them at all. But the difference is the LLMs will actually interact with you at a level of intelligence that's sort of stunning. I mean, most of the people I know in AI are telling me already... I've never met one of them so of far. Of course, because they're digital. But they're... I just no, I've yesterday... never had a call from one of them. That's so. fair. Well, hopefully you won't, because you won't yeah. be coming out of a hospital, although I, you know, you're, I'm sorry you had that bad experience with your, <laughs> uh, you know, HSA. <laughs> but, you know, it's... You just... What, you were you watching, yep. have an all-knowing system that can sort of ingest all the information and provide it back to you accurately. Mm -hmm. Now, the trick is, is it accurate? But i give you an example, going back to the medical one. If this, if this is following up with you and, you, and you say, well, how have you been feeling since you got out of the hospital? And you say, well, I have some shortness of breath, immediately sends you to a human being. It knows okay, when you're that, in a if, danger zone. If I ask for a human, like if I'm, if I'm really sick and I don't feel like dealing with this and I'm, I'm not trusting it, if I, is there an, an out that says Usually. customer representative human? Yeah. I mean, it's funny. I was listening to a call exactly like that where yeah. the customer was did not want to talk to the right, AI, right. and the That's AI me. actually negotiated with them 
to show him that it was useful that I'm smart and to let it stay on the phone. The guy finally laughed. He's like, okay, fine. Fine, help me out. Yeah. yeah but, but there's so many. Look, if you think about the evolution of technology, I started one of the first web businesses here in New York City in 1993, took it public on the NASDAQ, got on the little screen above us. Um, the web changed most things. Mobile changed many things. Yeah. Crypto pff, didn't change anything licit. It created a bunch of random you know, uh, currencies that could be traded and arbitraged. So that was, people called it Web3. That was an idiotic term. But AI will touch literally everything, one way or the other. I believe that. You had 2,000 pitches, and only three of them were, were AI. So you do other things. I read that you invested in a wildfire fighting robotic system. Very excited about that one. Just closed that deal Friday. I just happened to, to, to know that the Montana senator was involved with that. It's, it's different than that. Tim Sheehy had a drone and, uh, I guess, airplane company to fight. So this is different than that. This is no, this is a Canadian company called Wildfire Robotics. And what they do is imagine a triple-bodied snake that slithers into the fire, delivers water and flame retardant, can do it at night when the fire's the weakest. So not, it's not aerial. It's no. And then when the troops go in, the stuff's there for them. So it makes it safer and better, and it can push back the fire. They can do yeah. up to a five-mile-long fire break. Wow. And you think about, you know, venture is really about finding opportunities that can be stunningly huge and cover most of the world. Yeah. It's yeah. not about, you know, the acquisitions. I'm not dismissive of somebody that has a $300 million acquisition right. and it changes their life. But I want to see companies that can be, right for like, the, yeah. I have an AI company that is a, uh, able to act as sort of a, a chief of staff inside your software. It's called Maestro AI. And so it watches all your people and it tells you where you need to help or where someone's doing well. It just, imagine you as a CEO or a manager, you've got 300 people, you don't know what they're doing, but the AI will. I can watch okay. that and be super. That's useful to any business over 10 people. Watch me how. Watch my strokes. Well, right, it starts, with, uh, it starts with the engineers. So it's looking at the code, you know, and all of that. So. You know, it'll evolve, but I would love, there was an off-Broadway. It'd be nice if a manager could actually check in and see how you were doing or care about those things instead of how, how quickly you're working. Well, you realistically, businesses care a lot about, when I was running my public company, I used to, we used to do once a week stand-ups, and I would say, how was your weekend? And that would last 30 seconds. And then we'd be like, okay, now let's talk about what's going well, what's going poorly for you in, in the business. It's a business, let's... I don't need, uh, maybe it's my generation. Well, I mean, what's going well in your business? That would be useful. In your, exactly. That would exactly. be useful. Of the team you have, what's the, what are the things that are going well? What are the things that are falling I don't need behind? I somebody hold my hand and ask okay. me how my weekend was. We but I know, nice but to check them with I will tell you the current going. generation seems to care a lot about a little more of the touchy-feely stuff. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>